you can spin the cassette backwards, but when you can also spin it forwards, it makes a funny sound. Something may be wrong with your free hub. So that's what I'm going to show you today. This one's broken. I'm going to take it apart and show you how a free hub is put together. This ramp cassette is pretty cool too. You can see the that pattern of missing teeth there. <laughs> on each side there's one spot on each cog where it's missing. It makes it easier to shift up. I kind of see it when I rotate it around there. Kind of a neat SRAM cassette feature. But this one started doing that on me going forward. So something is up. So I'm going to take this one apart and I will show you how it works. So this is an American Classic CR420 wheel, aluminum, real rear wheel, obviously. Uh, really like this wheel. It's got a cool looking aluminum hub here. I think it's pretty cool looking. Kind of sad to see it. I don't have to use it anymore. But anyway, this guy broke, which is what led me to get carbon wheels. But I'm going to show you how a free wheel works because I took it apart. Try and fix it. Turns out it can't fix it because the little spring was broken off. So I'm going to go in here and show you what's going on. So yeah, normally you can only spin it backwards. This one also spins forwards because the little spring's broken. So I've already taken it apart, so it's going to look a little easier than it actually is to do this. But it's just the process that I'll show you here. So obviously you have your cassette. I'm going to take this off with your cassette tool. So you take off the lock ring. Lock ring. Usually there's a couple of freestanding gears that come off. There's the cassette. Cassette. Just pull that guy off. old SRAM cassette I had. This one's actually broken too. I don't know if you can see that crack right there. Broken. Anyway. Oh, there's free hub. Right there. You can, obviously you can tell it's not in good shape because it I'm turning it forwards. That's not supposed to happen. So how do you deal with one of these? Not too difficult actually. It's on the opposite side. It's on this hub design. Um all you have to do is unscrew these guys and you can pull the axle right out. So these here are where it sits in the dropouts. This one I've already kind of pulled out a little bit to make it easier for me to take it back apart. So that guy comes out like that. Then you just get a big wrench on this. Turn that. This comes off. Simple, just a little lightweight aluminum nut. And then this one comes off. This is actually how you set your bearing preload when you're putting it back on. It's pretty important to get that right. That's, this is the one thing that makes it tricky to rebuild a hub is the setting the preload on the bearings. But once you get the hang of it, it's kind of a trial and error thing. You just kind of set it until you get it right. So on this side, so this one also just screws right off. Bunch of threads there. You can see it's also taking off the little seal. Here's a little rubber seal on this. I'll show you in a sec here. That comes off. A little rubber seal on the back side. There's the axle. This one's aluminum. And there's one of the bearings. So there's four bearings in this design. Two in the hub. One on each side. And this actually uses the exact same bearings in the free hub. So. I'll show you. Let me turn it back around. So now, if you're lucky, you can just push it back. You might have to hammer on it or gently persuade it out. They push that out. And there's your free hub. So one bearing on this side. So we'll also have a bearing. And here's the other one right here. 
So this goes in on this side. And centers up the little ratchet ring right there you'll see in a second. That's where the other bearing of the hub goes. And then that right there. And then this is what I just took out. So you pull it out and there's your free hub body. And so this one like I said has two of the same bearings. These guys. One on either side of the body. There's one behind. Actually I can pull it, pull it out a little bit and you can see it. There's one in there. One on the other side. So two more bearings. The so four bearings total for this guy. Makes it pretty simple. Same exact bearing. Um, and here is how the little ratchet system works. Let me push this back. So normally there would be on here three little spring that come out. They come out of these little holes. Right? There's one there. You kind of see the three spots. Normally there's a little, I'm using the paper clip as a, an example, but there's a little spring that sticks out kind of like that. And that's what rides around and makes the ticking noise on these little, see these little circles here? So when you're freewheeling, it's making the ticking noise. You know, like that. It's hard to do it when it's off, but that's the ratcheting noise. And then if you look closely, when I go the other way, so if I'm pedaling this way, it's just ticking over it. If I pedal the other way, it's those little ratchets that come down, little poles. Let me do it again. Actually, it's easier to see if I put the little bearing in. It helps center it. So if I'm pedaling this way, it's freewheeling. Go like the other direction. Bring them. So the little ratchets come down. Boom. Boom. And that is how the freewheel works. So if I take this back out and kind of demonstrate that with this guy. So I'm just going to kind of get it set in there. I will drop down the little poles. And then, now it's engaged. So, poles are dropped down, free hub's engaged. So now, it's not going anywhere because it's got those big teeth engaged. As long as you're putting torque that way, it's going to maintain. But as soon as you back off, they release. And now you can spin freely, both directions actually. So now you have to have your little springs. Oops. Gotta have your little springs pop the balls back down. Pop. And then they will re-engage the teeth on there. So that's that's how a free hub works. So now it's re-engaged. Not going anywhere. Now I, can, now I can torque wheel all I want. As soon as I turn it the other way, whoop, they release. And now it's free to spin. So that's why I need those little springs that aren't on this hub. So this is what I need to get new. It costs too much, so I just got new wheels instead because this is an older design or whatever. So that's pretty much it. It just kind of rebuilds the opposite direction there. One really important thing to know, I see this tiny little spacer there. If you have two bearings to sit right next to each other, like these do, so this is the one that would go in the hub. It actually sits right up next to this other bearing. The spacer here um, is in the load path between the inner races there. If it wasn't there, the bearings would scrape against each other, so it provides a little bit of a space, a little bit of a gap so they can spin freely and not rub on one another like that. So that's pretty much it. And then if you were, say, if you wanted to replace your bearings, you just swap the bearings out. This guy would just, you know, slide, slide out like that pull the bearings out, put new ones in if you needed to. Uh, put it back together like that. Put your bearing back in the wheel. Put that guy back in. Bearing still on the other side, that's going to be push in. So that would go in all the way flush. And then on this side, get the little nut. Put that guy back on that and then you have to find your other part there it is and then if you were putting this back on tighten back that back up 
super easy to do. And like I said, the only thing tough to do is setting the preload. So once that's all set, you're ready to go. And usually manufacturers have some good instructions on how to do it. I say, you know, tighten it until it touches, then back off half a turn, and then tighten this up. So when you torque it down with your quick release, you're going to put some more load on there. So you want to have no play, but you want it to rotate freely at the same time. So it kind of takes a little bit of a little trial and error to get that to work, but that's pretty much it. So that's the inside of at least an American Classic Free Hub. Give you a little bit of an idea of how they work. So, hope you learned a little bit. Like to see the inside of the hub. And thanks for watching. Now get out and enjoy your ride.